Vulnerabilities have been found in Xorg, which can lead to elevation of privileges on systems where Xorg is running and even include some remote code execution for sessions of SSHX being forwarded. So what does all this mean? Let's talk about this. This is not to pick on Xorg, but to really say why you need to keep on top of updates because these sorts of vulnerabilities can be found in lots of code, including our programs or packages that run on our Linux systems or any operating system at that. So let's talk about this post here. Basically, this says this was a Xorg security advisory posted today. Multiple input validation failures in the Xorg server extensions. So the X server has had some issues. And as it says here, local privileges elevation on systems where X server is running privileged and remote code execution for SSH X forwarding sessions. From my understanding here, that would mean if we had some Linux system with X server on it, what could happen is if someone had a remote access, let's say they could potentially execute a piece of code in a non-bound portion of memory, which could be something malicious and have them gain access to your system. So of course that's bad, but let's talk about this because these errors are actually common, these out of bounds. So what does that exactly mean? So if you don't make certain checks, uh, especially in languages like C, what will happen is you get to allocate memory. So you get to allocate a certain amount of, let's just call them blocks of memory. If you don't check and see that these blocks are the only ones that you use, what can happen is you could actually put an extra block after the fact since these aren't being validated. So basically, let's say, oh, I needed four blocks to run my particular code. And that's what the system gave me. Well, if I don't check and see that I'm only ever using those four blocks, someone could introduce a fifth block. And that's basically what's happening here with this out of bounds access as they call it. And what's the problem with this fifth block is now they can actually run some code somewhere else completely in memory. So this might be a huge block of a whole nother application or program, something malicious, which would be really bad because these applications that aren't intended to run have been ported into memory and can run now on your system. And what's worse is if they have what's called elevated privileges, that means they have full access to the system. This portion of memory can run something malicious, a virus, a keylog, or what have you. You can imagine all the worst things, of course. So what it says here is the handler for something called proc, or maybe process XKB, set geometries. So that's a request of the XKB extension, does not properly validate the request length leading to out of bounds memory, right? So basically this is some function, clearly. And in this function, there was no check for how long the request made by something calling this function is and allows you to insert more than necessary information, which can lead to an out of bounds memory write, which of course is explained as pretty bad because then they gain access to something with elevated privileges to make various different code execution happen on your computer, perhaps ma maliciously. So this is our first CVE security notice. Then the second one here is the handler for device info and other functions request of the XKB extension does not properly validate the request length leading to out of bounds memory, right? Again, another similar issue to the one I just explained, which can lead to big issues. And if you enjoy following along, please smash that like button for me. Also only about 4% of you are subscribed. Subscribe below if you haven't. Let's keep going here and see what the fixes look like and get even more in depth with this. Hopefully I'm explaining this in a manner that uh, everyone understands. I know that these subjects can be quite complicated sometimes, especially for non-programmers, but it is a good understanding what kind of problems and vulnerabilities can happen to our systems, including through software, which is something that people don't necessarily think about all the time. And this can happen to just about any software that has high privileges to your computer. So especially stuff that runs in tandem with the Linux kernel or any kernel at that matter. So patches for these issues have been committed to the Xorg server Git repository, and it tells you which version is ported. And we'll shortly include these patches. So update if you can, if you of course are using Xorg server that is less than that version. So what they did was they added a request length validation for the function that we 
talked about earlier. No validation of these various fields on the report were done, so a malicious client could send a short request that claims it has N sections or rows or keys, and the server would process that request for N sections running out of bounds of the actual request data. So that's what I kind of explained uh, earlier, where basically we have this server, which is X org, and we have a client, which could be an outside client that makes a request to the server, which this is of course some program just running on your computer with elevated privileges. And the problem here is that that request that's supposed to be short can actually claim that it has N or any number of requests or memory sections, rows, keys, what have you. And then that server would actually process that request, even if it's malicious and run, as they say, out of bounds of the actual request data. So how do you fix that? They fixed it simply by adding a size check to ensure that the data is valid. What was seen here is that the check function was probably misspelled and didn't actually call the proper check function in order to check if the request made was what's expected by the server. And that's how this was actually found and fixed. If we go down, XKB often uses foo check and foo function pair. The former is supposed to check all the values in a request and error out on the bad length, bad value, etc. The latter is called once we're confident that the values are good. They may still fail on individual device, but that's a different topic. So basically they're explaining how a check happens, which is great to know. But how did we fail to do this check? Well, let's talk about that. So it says here, in the case of uh, device info, those functions were incorrectly named with device info, ending up as the checker function and set device info check as the setter function. So basically these two were kind of swapped as uh, far as I can tell. As a result, the setter function was called before the checker function accessing the data and modifying the device state before we ensure that the data is valid. So what happened is, so basically since the info check function was called before device info, well, we can understand why this is bad because you do the check and regardless of this check, you still process information. Basically, as they're saying, they access the request data and modify device, device state before actually ensuring that it's valid. In particular, the setter function relied on values that had already been byte swapped. This in turn would lead to potential out of bound memory access. Fix this by correctly naming the functions and moving the length checks over to the checker function. These were added in this commit here to the wrong function, probably due to incorrect naming as I had speculated before. So what does all of this mean? In a nutshell, it means that sometimes developers miss key checks in their programs and software. That's why it's important to keep up with the latest and greatest in updates to your systems. That way someone can't execute malicious code on your computer. Now this is across the board with all software. So I'm not, so I'm not picking on Xorg. The reason I wanted to bring this one up is this affects quite a lot of Linux users because Xorg server is one of the largest display servers and protocols outside of Wayland used in servicing your displays. So it's important to see that even highly managed and regarded softwares can have their own issues. And it's important to keep on top of things like this. Well, if you enjoyed this talk about out of bound request and function issues, make sure to smash that like button for me, subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.